Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying with Jim Ashura. Today we're going to tie a jig head gold rib hair's ear. This fly that I have in the vise is a jig head hair's ear. It doesn't have the gold rib. You can see I used a uh, stem from the flank feather for the rib on that one. Just trying some different stuff. But we're going to tie a gold ribbed hare's ear on the jig head. And before we get started, the hook that I have is a, this is a Lively Legs lip splitter fly hook. It is a 310J size 14, a barbless jig hook. And it is a two extra strong black nickel jig hook. I love these hooks. They're super, super sharp. And when you get the fish to the net, the hook just falls right out. The bead I'm going to use is a Lively Legs Down and Dirty Slotted Tungsten Beads. This is a 3 millimeter for a size 14, 12. And these are the gold ones. You can see the slotted slots in there. Now one of the problems that uh, fly tires have when you try to put your your bead on your hook, you know, your fingers get in the way. You know, it's it's hard. It's hard to do that. So what I do is I take my hackle pliers, the electric tester type, and hook them on there. And there we go. Also, the surface that I put the bead on is the hairline bead mat. And very quickly and easily it goes right on there using the hackle pliers. I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to put this hook in. And then I will show you the bead mat if you haven't don't already know what it looks like. Here is the hairline. It has all these uh little dimples in there and that holds the beads in place keeps them from rolling around and what I do is I lay the bead on there so that the small hole is facing up and then you can easily using your hackle pliers to grip the hook can easily put the point of the hook right in that small hole but here is the hairline dubbing see it has a, a rabbit on there and I, of course I had to go ahead and stick an eye on there and get it from hairline.com very very useful if you tie with a lot of beads okay so I'm going to use a this is just a dark thread this is a dark olive actually but uh, it is a 6 ot so I'm going to start right at the bead there and I'm going to pin the bead into position You have to make sure that you get that bead on there correctly. You got to get the hook through the small hole and not through the slotted side. But also, what's also important is that you secure that bead with that slot in the correct position. You can see how you got a little bit of an opening there, which shows you that it is pushed all the way to the top so there is more weight with this bead on the bottom side of the hook this is the top but when it fishes it's going to be the bottom and the weight being on there flips it the heaviest part's going to go down first so the heaviest part would be that part of the hook now for the tail I'm going to use the these are just a waterfall come in a bag of waterfall flank feathers some dark flank feathers is what you want and I'm gonna take a bunch I don't know if I have a dozen of them here it's really your own preference how how thick of a tail you want the original 
gold ribbed hairs here use deer hair for the tail so that tells you how thick it really is the tail really is so we're going to make that tail about the length of the hook shank we'll go ahead and tie that on there you can actually put a wrap underneath the tail and that actually helps to separate the tails now I'm going to tie in the rib there it is and have it this is a number 16 gold and silver tinsel we have gold on one side silver on the other side and I want to see the gold when I'm done so I'm going to tie it in so that I can see the silver side putting the gold side to the hook shank and we're gonna run this up I actually come right up to the bead with it because it gives a little bit more of a, a little bit more bulk right there to help hold that bead in the proper position I could get that up there before I tie it off I could go ahead and come back just a speck and then that bead won't be in the way when you go to cut it and we'll bring our thread back and I'm going to leave the uh, vise like this so I can have room to put my dubbing on. Now some hair's ear dubbings, especially the ones from the major outlets, the hair's ear is very, very dry. So what you want to do is you want to use some wax on there. And the wax I use is from Streamside Leaders. This is 100% beeswax and just put a little bit on there it doesn't take a whole lot actually get probably more on my finger than I do on the thread but the dubbing that I have is actually just from a cottontail rabbit that was shaved and chopped up so there's a lot of you know you got a lot more of like oil and stuff in there it hasn't been washed out and uh, sanitized, if you will. And we're going to put that on. You can see how nicely it goes on because of the fact that it hasn't been sanitized. And we're going to, I'm going to put on just a speck more. And bring that up just a speck more. It doesn't really matter if you get a little bit too far up there because I mean you could go right up to that but we're going to put our uh, wing case in right there but first I'm going to wrap my rib and I'm wrapping that and we can see the gold side now Let me move that thread up there. There we go. And I'm going to trim that off. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you wrap a little bit too far because it's going to get covered again anyway. I'm going to bring it back. And we're only going to see two wraps of the gold. Now, we're going to tie in the wing case. For the wing case, we want the turkey tail. I like to use the tip of the turkey tail. If you think that you need some uh, malted look to it, you can use further down the turkey tail. But for the amount that's actually going to be showing, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to just take close to a half inch of this turkey tail and I pulled it off now I'm gonna cut away that light colored tip because I want the dark color and I'm gonna tie this in and I'm gonna tie it in starting 
basically on my side of the hook and it's going to pull to the top yeah lost a couple fibers there not a big deal now it's sitting right on top or right on the bottom now I'm going to flip my fly over and I'm going to put the legs in and the legs are going to be the same uh, flank feather and I'm going to use a, quite a bit of these because I want those legs to really show first I want to get them relatively even and I want them to hang off the front about maybe about a half a length of the hook shank maybe even just a little bit more we're going to tie these in and we're going to go right up to that bead that bead will actually help to most of the time it helps to separate them this particular time not so much let's go ahead and cut that excess I'm going to put a little bit more dubbing on there. And we want to go about three quarters of that space. I'm going to pull a couple of those guard hailers out. Now I'm going to divide my legs. Make sure I got a decent amount there. I'm going to tie them back. And you want to go back slightly on them so that they're not coming out of the bead. But you want them coming out slightly back. And there we have them coming out slightly back. And a couple short ones there. Now I'll put a little bit more of the dubbing on there to fill in where my thread was and the such. Fill in that thorax. take our wing case and we're going to fold that over put a couple in front a couple on top and we'll go ahead and trim that off Now if you have a little bit too much of the thread exposed, you could just put a little bit more dubbing on there and whip finish. I don't believe I need it. I'm just going to make sure that I get that tie off really close to the bead. Tighten that in. Actually moved it. Pull the get the poke and snip. And now I can take a little bit of head cement and put a drop. Put it on the wing case on the front. And that'll soak in and get that thread. But here we have a jig head gold ribbed hair's ear. Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.